What is going on ladies and gentlemen, AJ Good here at the House of Masks, where we unbox and review cool shit almost every single day, and for some reason I'm just in a really good mood, so I wanted to extend my good mood to you. If you guys happen to be having a bad day, I hope it gets better, and if you guys are having a good day, I hope that it continues. I can't thank you guys enough for being here and watching my videos, I definitely appreciate it, and I have been feeling the love lately, so a huge thank you to you guys, my friends, fans, audience, whatever you want to call it, thank you guys very, very much, and let's go ahead and get on into this unboxing. Now, a few weeks ago, I unboxed a liar from my buddy Matthew Donnelly, who sadly got out of the hobby a couple years ago, but he told me that he was ready to actually start selling the masks that he had, and he hit me up and wanted to know which ones I wanted, so I went ahead and picked some out. I purchased them for a very, very good deal, and we have yet another one here, and I'm pretty excited for this one, but what I'm really, really excited for was to get this one over with so we could move on to the very last mask that I was going to be purchasing from him, and it shouldn't even be that big of a deal to me because I already have like four of them and I'm sure that some of you guys out there have already predicted what I'm going to be getting but I'm just excited for whatever reason so now that this one is here we can go ahead and shoot the video on this I can get it up on the shelf and honestly I desperately needed one of these so I should be more excited than I am not that I'm not excited but yeah it's hard to explain I'm just really anxious to get to the final purchase from Matthew Donnelly so without further ado let's go ahead and jump on into this package and we will take a look at what we've got it appears to be a shoe box but it did come from overseas so I'm assuming it's going to be the weirdest shoe box I'll ever open because for some reason here in America we just have normal boxes and everywhere else they seem to be a little more difficult. Maybe that's just my stupid American brain. I don't know. Yeah. Alright, here we go. Laugh my ass off if there were shoes in here instead of a mask. Alright, looks like it is inside the bag and uh, I will pull it out and let you guys take the first look. Obviously, here we have a late self-titled pig conversion, and this thing is absolutely gorgeous. Apparently, this was done by Travis Hersleff, which is pretty cool because I don't have many masks converted by him, but he's really good when he chooses to convert pieces, so I'm definitely excited to have this in the set. AJ from the future here, and real quick, I just sat down to edit this video, and I realized that I said that this was a Travis pig, but I went back in my messages just to make sure with Donnelly, and he says that it's actually a Rooney copy, which is even better better because Rooney is fully out of the hobby and his pieces are like grail pieces to me and a lot of other collectors so that is cool don't know why I thought he said Travis but I was pretty certain that he said Travis did it but Rooney did it which is even better in my opinion so hell yeah oh hell yeah and I do technically already have a late self-titled version in the set, but it's with the bust set, so it's not actually on the shelves. And I figured this one would be a fantastic addition to those shelves, especially since the two self-titled pigs that I have right now are rotting pretty badly, and I'm going to have to have them replaced soon so we can just start working on pigs. I told you guys last year that one of the things that I wanted to knock out this year was a big portion of my paw set, and I think we are off to a good start with this piece. So everything about this looks perfect. I can definitely tell that it was done on an original pig due to the size. All all of the weathering looks absolutely fantastic, and I think maybe the only thing I'm going to want to change is to add a little more significance to the folds up here and make those a little more prominent because the forehead looks pretty flat, and a lot of people tend to miss those weird crinkly folding areas when they do these conversions. So I'm definitely probably going to take that rivet out and uh, just place this forehead just a little bit different, but that is the only thing that I see that I would complain about. All the subtle little weathering here. Uh, somebody was going to actually sell me a pig last week, and they said, that it had ripped right here and it had been fixed with tape but if you guys want to know the truth that is part of the conversion there was definitely a rip there on Paul's mask that had been taped back together and I had to let them know that because they were like I'll sell it to you discounted because there's a rip on the side and I was like yo that is part of the conversion you should probably be charging more because they picked up on that detail and I do believe that I'm going to go ahead and buy that copy from that guy as well because I do need one other variant of the late self-titled pig it is a variant that I discovered a couple months ago if I wasn't the one that discovered discovered it then I was the one that discovered it publicly and it is this weird version uh, it's, it's basically just this but it's during like the super late self-titled tattoo the earth era and Paul actually has black duct tape on the straps looks like the straps had fallen apart and he had just quickly fixed them with some black duct tape so I do want to knock that version out I've literally only seen that photo of it but it's good enough to have in the set and I like late self-titled pigs anyway so I figured if there's going to be a few variations of the early self-titled with the merit lock through the nose 
those and then a version without it. We might as well go ahead and have two late self-titled versions on the set since adding duct tape is about as big of a difference as adding a merit lock in the nose. So yeah, kind of got off topic there. We're supposed to be talking about this mask that I just unboxed. So as I mentioned earlier, this thing looks like it's in perfect shape. I don't see any signs of rot or disfiguring or anything like that. So a huge thank you to Matthew Donnelly for selling me this, especially at such a good price from overseas. I definitely appreciate it, man. And I cannot wait to knock out the last big piece from our giant transaction. Been spanning a couple months now, and I am definitely excited to get that knocked out. And I'm going to be honest, I don't even know where I'm going to put the last piece that I'm getting from you. But I can't wait, and you probably can't wait for the money and to have it out of your attic so you have some space. So with all of that being said, I think that is going to just about do it for this video. Just a typical, regular, nothing crazy Slipknot mask unboxing for you guys. Because it seems like no matter what else I do, these videos still do the best. As always, I'm going to leave you guys with some nice up-close shots of this thing, let you see all of the detail up close and personal, and that will be that for this video. So thank you very, very much for watching. Say no to drugs and alcohol, and until next time, we will see you later. Peace. Mask on, 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 mask on